referee, look out now. From the sideline, forget about it. This baby's over. Oh, my goodness. One man. Goodbye. Hello, Heisman. And most especially, in 310 days in Ann Arbor, Michigan, on the football field. Another block. One more. He's got it. Touchdown. No flag. Samuel cuts it back. Ohio State wins. Here's the run again. Got it in Edwards. Whoa. Can they catch him? No. Got it in Edwards again. All right, everybody. Welcome back. Episode eight, I believe, of Scarlet and Blue Show. Garrison, how we doing? I'm doing good, my guys. Uh, kind of a rainy day here here in uh, Grand, good old Grand Rapids, but uh, I'm, I'm having a good day yourself. Yeah, quite the opposite down here in Texas. It's 105, so we're dealing with some different weather. I'm, I'm, that's okay. Right. I'm okay. I'm okay without that. <laughs> We got lots to talk about, so we got to dive right in here, man. Yep, let's go. Uh, it's been a few days since the last episode, and I, dude, I honestly thought that we would have trouble coming up with topics, especially before the mm. season started. <laughs> that hasn't been an issue at all, and so mm. lots to talk about today. The first one is, I think, obviously the news that dropped with with Jimmy Harbaugh. Yep. So in case you missed it, which if you're watching this, I don't know how you missed it, but if you did, Dan Wetzel over at Yahoo Sports reported that, that an agreement between the NCAA and Jim Harbaugh broken down. So this means the case will likely move further along to the NCAA disciplinary system and probably rolls into 2024, which means the good news of that, of course, is that Jim's coaching every single game this yep. year, presumably, yep. which is fantastic, which we all we all need. So, need. yeah, what we need and we want. So here's the thing, man. Here's this is just I can't I can't help but just laugh at this. It's tough yeah. to, again, man. If it wasn't already hard before, it is hard now to wake up and take the NCAA even the slightest bit serious. And I want to hear your thoughts on it, of course. But just a couple things to maybe to note here. So. Maybe let's break it down to this. Garrison, you can call it a conspiracy theory. You can say what you want to say. No, I said you built a conspiracy theory. Do not mince my words. You are recreating a conspiracy theory. You're you're accusing me of creating a conspiracy theory. I don't think I'm creating, but you are accusing me of such. Fair? Yes. Yes. Fair. fair. I don't so I, I don't I don't think we are. But if you read I and I, I may have missed uh the latest article, but Sunday night, he... Dan Wenzel had another article that came out and it basically just, I want to take a quote from that. And he said, he says, it's not so. It, okay. Let me, let me go back. In the NCAA's comments on the case, he's, they said not a cheeseburger issue. So to that, Wenzel writes a piece about it and says, not a cheeseburger issue. And this suggests the NCAA is so embarrassed by the dragging it receives online, which early in the article he was talking about, how the whole, oh, it's because of a cheeseburger thing was hitting social media and hitting Reddit and hitting all the message boards. He's saying the NCAA is so embarrassed by the dragging it received online that it's hell bent on hitting Harbaugh even harder than its own enforcement staff staff thought was acceptable. So the, uh, I, I don't even know what else to say, man. Like, it's just, a, it's a stupid thing. It's, it's, trying to come up with like a like a, a riveting take here and i just i just think it's 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 laughable it's laughable garrison dean all right so like i, I don't want to say this I, I i i um i commend jim for say, like saying 10 toes down i do i do my problem with the whole situation when he's taking drag no it's because what he suffered was something that a lot of ohio state fans have seen and a lot of things that Michigan State fans have seen, and it's called the blue wall. And what he got oh, hit with was the blue wall. So let's just be fair about that. Yeah, the blue, the but, blue. Okay, sorry, go ahead. Continue. Uh, <laughs> the blue wall has uh, nothing to do with right? it. <laughs> it has it, I, I, I okay. Get hey, listen, look, it has nothing to do with this here. But it was, but, his, but I, I say that jokingly, but I say that to get, to lead into the when I say this. You guys kept saying cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. 
And now NCAA, you guys are too big to have to like bend the knee to a, a fan base. But oh, but, you said NCAA is too big to bend the knee. Yeah, but they did by putting by going out saying not because of a cheeseburger. Most people's brains know it's not because of a cheeseburger. Okay, like most people know there are other things that mis- they were doing that were illegal, like recruiting wise. We understand that. Were they that big of a deal? No, but you broke the rules. It only became the level one because Jim Harbaugh presumably lied or is thought to have lied or misled that. But so, but regardless of all that, yes. Is the NCAA stupid? Yep. So we'll I'm agree. just saying the rules are rules. The rules are rules. God, I love it when a Buckeye fan says the rules are the rules. I actually know Garrison. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pin you to that. I love it when any college football fans says, Oh, the rules are the rules. We sell station, Brysac. We sell oh, station. Oh, geez. Um, but, but yeah, man, I, I think to your point about Harbaugh being you're digging ten toes deep. Is he gonna be there next year? Uh, okay, way to kill my segue. But yeah, that's that's a that's an interesting question. Does yeah. this drag so I think there's you know probably many ways this happens, but one of two ways this could go is is that the the sanctions, the punishment gets completely dropped altogether or or it's gonna be a very minor punishment, maybe some like scholarship type stuff. Like what happened with Tennessee, that type of punishment? Um, maybe not as severe as, you know, wins being taken away, but I think there's probably going to be something in there. Like but, Virginia, but they, did that, they did that to themselves though. They, they sanctioned that on themselves. Yeah. So if Michigan yeah. sanctioned themselves with it, then it would probably be something like that. And I think then they won't probably, do They won't, they won't do Nor should they. And, oh, and then. So pompous. Or, or <laughs> the reality is, is that Harbaugh, knows his punishment's coming. He also has a stud quarterback, two stud running backs. I mean, you'd list it on the roster of all the talent that possibly and likely they're losing next year. It makes you wonder that, yeah, would would he come back with that in the mix? Like, would that be – would coming back to a team that needs, I don't say a rebuild, but a major reload? Yeah, that would be – that would be an interesting conversation to have. And imagine, imagine he comes back, right? Still gets four games. Brez, who do you play in those first four games next year? Uh, Texas is one of them, my friend. Yes, yes. It's not as favorable yes. as the schedule. <laughs> well, Texas, USC, Texas, USC, you know, Ohio State all in one year, baby. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, you know, you come back to that, and I'm not saying – I don't know if I'm at the point where I'm ready to, like, make a, make a prediction there because there's mm-hmm. just a lot that can happen, but it is interesting. Yeah, man. Oh, it is. It is. Is, it is. Is it the last dance for Jimmy Harbaugh? I don't know. That'll be the, that'll be the headline. I'm just glad he's back. I'm glad he's back. I'm glad we're back to our regular, regularly scheduled programming. I hope that he gets hit with the wrath of the football gods, and you guys suffer the same fate that we did with Jim Dressel. It's not. The That's same. what I hope. Well, you That's what I hope. Disgusting. Hellfire and brimstone on you guys. That's what I. That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, I love it. I love it. So yeah, we'll see. I mean, everyone's obviously again. Mm-hmm. I think if you're watching this show, you're you're a sicko like us, so you're tuned into everything. But you know, if there's any other thoughts too on all this, let us know. But I think everyone's gonna be watching pretty closely. Yeah. Um, I think the I think the NCA has its own way to get out of. I think the NCA is no, going to. I, I don't want just suspended. I don't want any excuses. I don't want any excuses this year. I want. I want. I want him there for every game. I don't want him to miss a minute. I, I want this to be able to do a revenge tour. I want him to enjoy every single minute <laughs> of this season. Every and then next thing you know, next thing you know, sixty-three points across your face. That's what I'm hoping for. All so, right, Garrison. Let's dive in, man. What's going on? Is your offensive line as bad as everyone's saying it is? No, I just think Ohio State Twitter goes into a frenzy sometimes and. They don't have anything else to talk about because we're so we're always usually we're so great of a program. We have much to talk about, but um, no, there like there was there was a little bit of struggling. There was a practice that was really lackluster. Um, I'm not surprised at that. Bryce, we played high school football together. Have you ever seen a lackluster practice? <laughs> yep. Exactly. Um, but I mean, some 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 news though. Um, I have it here. So Josh Fryer was mostly running uh, left tackle in the spring. He has now been moved to right tackle. Why? 
because of Josh Simmons, who was running the right tackle at the time. They said he's been making an impression on the coaches lately, and so he had moved the left tackle. Um, one of the other young guys, Tegra, he's been uh, also running reps at left tackle. So, and he said that he's been seeing some type of consistency over the last few days. So I'm happy to hear that. I, like, I'm, I'm very happy to hear that. Um, when it comes to center, there's not much news. Uh, there's a battle going on there. We'll see what makes of that. I think he, I think he's very confident in who's, whoever gets the center job. So I don't think he's really talking about that right now. But that, uh, like you said, that was the tackle position, man. That's the um, like I told you, I don't care about the quarterback position. I don't care about anything on offense but tackle. And I trust that whoever is going to be in those positions and they are coached under the tutelage of Fryer, or Fry, they will be. They will be fine. The voice of reason. Like I, <laughs> you want to know my honest to God of reason, Bryce? Yes, please. It's Ohio State, baby. Okay? It's Ohio State, baby. You never see, you've never really, dude, even when, like, these last two years, people talk about our O-line. Dude, how many, like, those are all uh, uh, first, second, third round pick guys, fourth round pick guys. Like, come on. What are we talking yeah. about? We, 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 and there's some stats, the line, Bro, offensive line has never been a thing at Ohio State since I started watching football, and I'm not going to care about it now. Not to the extent everyone wants me to. I refuse to do that. It's like asking me to care about who Ohio State hires a head coach. This isn't, this isn't the University of Michigan. I don't have to worry about that, okay? So I, I trust everything from the top to the bottom, to the water boy. Now, a question might be our trainer. That's another question for another day. <laughs> or that, that, that I'm really sad to hear that Court Williams got injured, man. Uh, yeah. After you tore his ACL again, I, Bryce. Uh, Court's parents are uh, are actually friends of mine, so uh, like my so my parents they get a lot of news about him. So I'm I'm really hurt for that kid. Mm. And then um, Benny Christians, you know, he might have been taking some. Yeah. Who knows what? <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> You know, alleged. No, no, and allegedly, he he's he. Uh, it says that uh, like he he was forthright about it. He was forthright about it. And so, yeah. um, you know, I mean, I, I don't know if the kid's gonna play much this year. It, it looks like he was kind of pushing towards third or fourth string. But uh, I hope that he's a young guy. Hope the best for him. We'll see him next year, buddy. Be ready. Uh, so I'm gonna go through some quick stuff here, Bryce, if you'll Eddie. let me. Um. So when it comes to uh the defense. Now, there's a lot of things they talked about, but there's something specific that I pointed that I, saw, that I heard that I cared a lot about, and it was leadership. That's what Brian Day said, leadership. And what's so big about that to me is that a lot of last year, how we got beat was big plays. People weren't really driving on us like that, Bryce. Like, we, we allowed a lot of big plays. That's why when people say we didn't have a good defense last year, I'm like, we're top 15 for a reason, okay? Like, that, that, is, that is the truth of the matter. And so... The reason I was happy to hear about leadership is because when guys are held accountable, like leadership holds guys accountable, okay? And if when guys are held accountable, BS doesn't happen. Diamond Edwards going, was 85 and 75, 75 and 85 don't happen. Um, guys getting beat on routes doesn't happen. Guys missing tackles and whipping on tackles doesn't happen. Guys on third and long three times in a game, in a playoff game, and allowing Georgia to go on third and long and complete passes doesn't happen when guys are held accountable. So, <laughs> sorry, that doesn't happen. You know, when guys make field goals when they're held accountable. So, I was really happy to hear about that. Um, and then... Above all, above all, this is what I was happy to hear about. And I'm, I want to read this to you. Um, Ryan Day was talking about Trey Hendo. Trey Hendo, who I call him Trey Hendo, but Travion Henderson, the best back in the United States of America in college football. Um, I don't even need to look at your face right now. Um, he said, Trey had a great offseason, he said. And he's he's had a great first 10 days of practice. I think he looks fast. He's seen the he's seen the holes. He's involved on special teams. Overall, I can't say enough about the kind of work he's putting in right now. Why in God's green earth is your core, your star running back on special teams? Oh, you probably don't kick a turn, Bryce. Probably kick a punt return. 
What? What? Oh, get Ryan Hall, Hall. out of there, man. Right, every, like, no, every, all right. Now, here we go. Here we go, everybody. Watch me tear Bryce apart with football knowledge since I am the encyclopedia on this show. Bryce, wow. was Tegan Jr. a star? Yes or no? A simple yes or no will suffice. <laughs> He's not a running was back. Te- was Tegan not- Jr. a star? I don't care. You said you said star. Was Tegan Jr. a star? Why can't a running right. back do – wait, wait. Why can't a running back do a punt return? That's the best, a better question. Why not? Or kick return. What are we talking about? Because you're the you're the you're the you're RB one, like you shouldn't be taking hits. Saquon like Barkley was on special teams. What are you talking about? But but to that, no 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 Wait, no no. Bryce, no Bryce, Bryce Bryce was Saquon Barkley a running back? Yes or no? Yeah, he was. Was he the star? Yes or no? He was a star. Did did you not see a game when he played Ohio State? He hit the opening kickoff back. He wasn't returning punts though, was he? Okay, Bryce, punt kick return. I don't, he didn't specify. He didn't specify it, Bryce. I don't. If you're if you're out there taking punts, all right. If he's on st- kick return, if, if he's on kick return, I'll give you kick return. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but if, fine, you, if you're taking fine, punts, fine. Okay, so it's up for debate. So we agree if if he's taking punt returns, Day's got to go. If he's taking kick returns, he's fine. If he's taking punt return, if he's taking punt return, Bryce, he's gonna give you guys hell. I don't care where he's on. I don't care where he is on the field. <laughs> Like, that's Travion Henderson. You're, yeah. I'll give you. A, I'll give you the kick return. But if you're telling me he's returning okay. punts, that's insane. Okay. With all this, and then, and then this is the last thing I'm gonna bring up, Bryce. There was a lot that I'm sorry. There's a lot that happened in Ohio State camp, okay? Because floor short. As the, here, we're gonna talk quarterback now. We're gonna talk quarterback right now because Ohio State Twitter went into a shambles today. It's all that. But it was great. He we was basically okay. He was basically talking about it. He said there was no consistency. Now, Bryce, yes, our quarterback needs consistency, but I care more about everything else Ryan Day said because I think he just turned the heat up in the quarterback room. And I want to read this to you, okay? Last thing I'm going to read you. Ryan Day says it's not good enough to do it two or three times and then throw an interception. The standard, he says, the expectation and standards are very, very high here. All the guys knew that when they came here. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. And then he says this. I could give you a list of all the things that both of them are doing well, and then a list of all the things they're not doing well. I just don't think as I sit here now, that I could name a name one of the starters. Who knows? Maybe in the next day, in the next few days, or by end of the week, someone really, really takes the next step. Bryce, I believe someone's going to take that next step. It's going to be Devin Brown. So you heard it here first, Devin Brown. I think it's going to be Devin Brown, and it's not because I don't like. I said it's not, this has nothing to do with being good or not being good. I think both those guys are are good quarterbacks. I think they're very talented quarterbacks. But you remember what I said a few episodes ago that I think Devin Brown has the higher ceiling? Mm-hmm. It's about to pop. Because eventually talent pops. So does that so that hurts Kyle McCord's legacy? But you think no, Devin Brown's well, I think I think Kyle McCord, you know, <laughs> I, I I I don't think Kyle didn't leave. Because there's a chance if, if Devin Brown messes up, he can still get back into the fold. Or not, he's already in the fold, but get the starting position. Yeah. But um like the first, the first quote I read you twice, and then the second one. I think that last pair, that that last quote there, Bryce, is there to turn the heat up. Because if you're, because if you're saying that neither guy is broken away from the other, but then you go and say, maybe I'll name one here the next few days or, or by the end of the week, Bryce. I, that means you're saying something. That you're saying something. Yeah, totally. So. Look at you, read between the lines. This, this guy right here. I'm telling you, no, you but that, that had, that there's no way that no one's like, there's no way you say that without having a reason for saying that. Now, maybe it's for both guys. I don't know. I'm just giving my opinion on this, of course. Take it, take it for what it's worth. But Devin Brown's about to pop. Okay. All right. August 15th. You heard it, you heard it here. You heard it here. Get your Heisman odds in. All right. Don't put it no, on JJ. Good, good stuff. You excuse me? Huh? Yeah. Well, let's, let's, 
Well, let's switch <laughs> over then. Let's go there because enough of your nonsense in Buckeyes camp. Oh, uh, no, I will say real quick, though. Mm. The Ohio State fan base is just oh, so sensitive. Oh, so Dude, sensitive. I... And like I'm not that sensitive, am I? You're not that sensitive. No, you're you're the outlier, Garrison. You're the voice of the Buckeye Nation. But with everything that Ryan Day has has done at the QB position, like I'm I'm critical of Ryan Day. You know that as a head coach. Mm. But as an offensive mind, like come on, what are we, what are we doing, guys? You guys are so soft. Oh my gosh. Good price. Like I mean, I mean, even stuff like you know, people are worried about the quarterback. Like. like there's a lot of guys you can put behind that offensive line at quarterback. Now they might not put up CJ Stroud numbers, Bryce, but I promise you with those guys on the outside and those guys that are running back and Ryan day, yep, you're going to put up points. I mean, Marvin, Marvin Harrison's out here saying he thinks he's going to run a four, three, eight. <laughs> like I, I know it's crazy. It's crazy. Pitch and catch, bro. It's pitch and catch. Grow up. So <laughs> no good stuff out of the Buckeyes camp. I think season can't come soon enough. Um, going over to Ann Arbor, the I updates. I mean, so Minter and Sharon Moore came to the stand. They both kind of gave press conferences, same old stuff, right? Sharon Moore was talking about who's, you know, who's off his line. He's saying he's got four starters mm-hmm. at tackle right now, which is an awesome problem to have. So we'll see who who those guys okay. are. Is that is that for the twenty draft picks you guys are gonna have? That'll be part of them. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So there's that. And then talked about Tyler Morris coming on as wide receiver three, which we talked about last week already a little bit, um, which is, which is awesome. You know, nothing new. If you watch the show, it's nothing new, right? We we already got you up to speed. Bro. Ahead of the curb. Ahead of the curb. Ahead of the curb. I like that. That's good. (laughs) Jesse Minter was obviously up at the podium as well. He was talked about Q uh, cornerback two position CB two talked about being a really good position, looking to mix five guys, which is awesome. But then brought up, Josh Wallace's name again. Um, so again, everything that we've said, just jumping into Mikey's pocket and just really looking to for to Mike Sanders for leadership. And so it feels good. It feels like that position's coming together. Um, you know, the safety position I think is an interesting one. I think we could have two of the best safety combinations in the Big Ten. Um, but I think Mason Brew had a good article about this today. But then the depth is a little concerning, especially with the RJ Moulton transfer this year down to Florida. So keep an eye out for the same. I forgot position. all about that. I forgot all about that. I know that one, that one hurt. I don't know what I would like to know what really happened there. That was a surprise because him and Macari Page, Yeah, probably him and Macari page. Have, I, they, I think they came in the same class together and have been in that safety position combo back there for a few years now, which is tough. <laughs> well, yeah, that's yeah. But what I do want to talk about, just out of camp, it's not really out of camp, it's more just news. Two interviews that were just utterly fantastic. So one was, did you watch Jim Harbaugh? Uh, it was from Big Ten Media Days, but NBC Sports aired it. I think they posted it later, though. I watched it. It came out I recently. Just it. the I, How you dislike that guy is beyond me. I don't I, get it. I don't I, dislike him. Okay, I don't think he's hateable at all. Is he quirky? Yes. Is he hateable? I don't get I don't honestly get and maybe I have my my blue shades on too heavy right now, but I do not get how you don't like that guy. <laughs> okay, yeah. I like him. I, I like. I, I think I could. I think I could get a beer with him. Yeah, I I just think he had some some quotes from that interview that were just fantastic. That we just need to we need to go over again. Maybe I should just play him. But I'm, I'm yeah, no, yeah. Let, let's hear. It, let's hear. It. So <laughs> he one of the lines was he compared JJ his play to dolphins playing in the ocean, <laughs> smiling and playing and enjoying it with his teammates. He also said, so that's one quote. He also said, when asked what were some of his favorite places to eat in, in Ann Arbor. Take back what I said. If you've, been, if you've been to Ann Arbor, you know there's plenty of, of good food choices there from, from upscale to greasy burger joints, right? Like there's, there's there's plenty of food options. And he said is one of his favorite places to eat is the Schembechler Hall cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> what a football guy. What a football guy move. He's like, I, I don't want to get out of here. And then he shouts out the nutritionists. Like, what? Again, how you hate this guy? I you just you have a darkness in your soul that I can't. Understand. I don't hate him, Bryce. I don't I speak for other people. I don't hate him. I, the general you, how you hate him to those of you that do i don't get it 
He had another quote. Bryce, do you, do you think if me and him had a conversation, you think I could take him serious? I think, oh, dude, I think you got an X's and O's. I think, oh, I think you'd love him. I think you'd say, when can, how much can we pay you to get to Columbus? And that's what you'd say. <laughs> um, other quotes he gave too, they asked him about his pregame schedule. And his quote was, he's superstitious about not being superstitious. Just take, take that as it is. And then, uh, I guess yeah, I guess that's all the quotes, but I again, man, my my take on Jim is like I get he's quirky, and if you're on the outside looking in, I can see how he ruffles feathers. I know how he says things. He's he's abrupt. He's direct. Um, but my goodness, man, I've watched him so closely over the past eight seasons now, and he hasn't changed a bit from a PR interview perspective, and I. Love that so much. But, but what, does he do? what, is that? what is that one that he did one of his interviews? You don't remember that? No. Like, no. He just like, like doing this. and Of course he did. I it, The only thing that bothers me is he doesn't wear the hat anymore to media days. Like, you should be hey, he, look, he, look, he looks younger. He looks younger. He yeah, got, he got, got a cut. I, I like the face. cut, you know. Yep. Oh, we, um, we caused those. We caused those. No, you didn't. Yeah, you might have. You might have. All yeah. right, and then the last thing too, the busting with the boys interview with yeah. I haven't watched the one of the office of linemen, but Don Edwards, Blake Horn, and eventually JJ mm-hmm. McCarthy came on and was with mm-hmm. Taylor Lewan. And go watch it, you haven't seen it yet. But Donovan Edwards is infectious. Like that guy, I mean, between him, JJ, Blake, and Donovan, the leadership on that side of the ball is fantastic. Plus, I think it's just great energy. I'm excited yeah. about them. He even came out this week and he's like, can you imagine me and Blake on the field and having to account for both of them? Love that quote. Love that line. Cause I think that terrifies you and Jimmy Knowles deep down. But Why, Bryce? if Blake Corm and Donovan Edwards are both on the field at the same time and Donovan's lined up in the slot, Oh, you're going to be trembling. You're going to be spun around way worse than Cam Martinez was. Insert clip. So I'm excited about him. Um, one shout out from that was it, during the interview, he actually calls out Ronnie Bell for not finishing the block on the first run against TCU because they were asked about what happened at TCU. And he just ragged on his guy who's in the NFL now. I loved it. It was all playful, but all for it, man. Maybe you all, should have ran faster. All for, I know. He said that too. He's like, I shouldn't have got caught, but I shouldn't have got, got tackled. But if Ronnie would have held the block, what about a touchdown? That game made How, he, he was 30 yards on the all right, bro. Um, I watched that, dude. I watched that game. I watched clips of that. I didn't say I watched it because I don't know if I watch that game again. That makes my blood boil, Garrison Dean. I watched Bryce. That is so but man, like like twins. I watched the Ohio State Georgia game last yep. night. The high I just watched the highlights of it. You know when I cut it off? Right after CJ's last big run, because it just goes downhill. It. Uh, <laughs> it just goes downhill from there, man. Oh gosh, it's so good. Um, so yeah, dude, that's that's the camp, man. Uh, more to come. I think there's a lot of good writers and beat writers talking about a lot of this stuff, and so we'll try to mm-hmm. get new spins and new takes on it. But can't come soon enough, my guy. It can't come soon enough. Oh, camp. All right, hey, AP poll also was released today. Let's talk talk about that. Yeah, well. yeah. Any highlights, Garrison? You love that stuff. I I uh, think it's dude. it's silly in many ways, but also, and the reason I say that is because Notre Dame was five, Texas A&M was six last year. So that's just how I feel about preseason. But that, that, this is a dip, different scenario. Different scenario. It is. It is. And you look at the rest of the top ten. It was pretty pretty good. Yeah. Aside um, from maybe Baylor. But go ahead. No, no, no. Yeah. Um, Top five, they got right. Um, of course, Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, Bama, and then LSU. Um, I, I do agree with that. Uh, I was surprised to see Notre Dame at 13. Now, um, earlier today in the space, I did hear something, and it's probably it, you know, it's, it, it's probably true, more than likely, because probably I think it happened last year. They're only that high, Bryce, because Ohio State and Notre Dame play each other. Two of the biggest brands in football, you need the ratings. You need the ratings. So if I get you, it. If you look at Notre Dame's schedule, obviously they're in Ireland. 
uh, for week zero against Navy. Uh, they got a cupcake the next week, but then they're at NC State the week after that. So possible L, possible L, possible L. And if you if they get that win and they go and do South Bend against you guys five and zero, oh, that they'll be top ten. You get a whole, presumably a top ten matchup. So yeah, I think I think you're. And then, and then what's going to you know, the problems with that? The, but the problem with that is that we're going to spank them. And they say, oh, no, they're not that good. Okay, well, all right, no, it's just Ohio State. That's yeah, that's going to be you. Oh, 1,000%. That they were trash last year. They lost to Marshall. Yeah, but they had some, they had some wins. They had some wins. Um, and Stanford. TCU at 17. Oh, Cal. I think TCU is going to be bad. I think the Big 12 is going to be better, and they lost all that they had. Mm-hmm. Like an um, upper-class team. I, I, don't, I don't see it there. I just I really don't see it there. Um, Oregon State I like them at eighteen. Uh, one yes, of the better agreed. running games in the nation. Uh, agreed. But I truly believe if any of the you know Oregon State, Oregon, Washington, USC, and um, am I missing? I'm missing someone. Utah. Utah. Thank you. Those five teams, right? I think if one of them comes out of there with one loss or maybe undefeated or one loss and wins their, the Pac-12 championship, I think they would have a case for number one by the end of the year. I, I think the Pac-12 is that good. I, I think it's that good. Um, and I want to give some love to Tulane. There you go. Let's go Green Wave. You guys deserve it. You guys deserve it because I, I love it when USC fans talk crap on Twitter. And I get to rem- I get to remind them about what you guys did to them. And my goodness, I think it was five hundred plus yards. Two let two Bryce. If you saw Tulane put five hundred plus yards, most of it rushing on you guys, would you have a heart attack? I know I would. I, I would. I would probably throw my TV. So, you know where I stand on that, though. I think. I think USC was just pissed off and didn't want to be there. I think it was the Georgia versus Texas game where Texas beat Georgia and Texas or Georgia missed out on the playoff. And that was when Ellinger said we're back. I think I think there was that. But but no, you're right. Dude, give give right. Tulane flowers. What, what, what do I say about you guys in 2020? You took the field. We did. You took the field. And Caleb played. Yeah, Caleb played that game, right? He was hot, wobbled. He was a little but... wobbly. Yes. But uh Addison didn't play though, did he? I don't think oh, he did. I, don't, I mean that I doesn't look. matter to me. You didn't play. You couldn't play defense against Tulane. Yeah, no, that, that's true. Yeah, although Sad. I think Tulane is. I, I'm with you. I think that's a fun. They're, they're a good. Team. They were a good. Team. They were a good team. They're a good team. All right, good stuff, everyone. Great show again. More to come this week. Some big stuff coming. So stay tuned. Oh, please do. Please do. All right. See you, Rob. See you, Dean.